Now, you guys have to remember, as you watch and, and listen to these things, that I'm an engineer, and um, I, I like to live in the real world, and math, to me, is a tool to solve some real-world problems. So today is a, is a great start as we, as we move towards the real world in our application of mathematics. Uh, we're going to talk about these things called parametric equations. Not nearly as hard, I mean, parametric, just kind of an intimidating sounding word. Um, not nearly as intimidating as it sounds. Uh, so we'll jump right into it and, uh, and say, where is my pen here? We're going to do this in black. So we're doing uh, section 11.1, .1, and that's uh, parametric equations. Now this one is kind of a fun one for me to do because I did not do it uh, last semester because uh, on the day that we were doing this, um, my son, my first son, was being born, so it brings back good memories for me. Uh, we've so far lived in this little world. Um, that looks like this. You've been doing math like this since seventh grade, where we have these two nice coordinates, x and y. And we always do these, uh, you know, y equals some function of x, and then we plot some stuff, parabolas and lines and blah, 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 um, and everything works great. Uh, but unfortunately, the real world doesn't always work like that. Um, for instance, if, uh, if I'm looking down on something, and uh, like I'm looking from space or from an airplane and I see something that looks like this. Um, and you're wondering, well, what is this thing? Uh, you may think, oh yeah, it's an ellipse. Uh, this is not actually an ellipse. What this thing is, is a high-speed oval racetrack. I read recently that, that Danica Patrick uh, got divorced and uh, you know, I'm sure that'll, that'll rock, the, uh, rock the world from uh, internet providers and web hosting companies all the way through NASCAR fans. So I just thought that you know, high-speed oval is a good example. So what does this have to do with um, you know, parametric equations? Well, is this a function, right? Back in uh, ninth or 10th grade, maybe you learned about the vertical line test where you pass this vertical line up and down um, is why a function of x? Well, no, because for the, any given x, there could be a y up here and there could be a y here. So this is not, um, the oval is not a function. So what do we do? Uh, in calculus, we like functions. Uh, the oval is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. It fails vertical line test. Uh, so how can we make this function? So what we're going to do is um, we're going to define x, just the x position. So x is you know, over on the right, x is over on the left, x is over on the right, x is over on the left, um, as a function of t, right? In other words, x equals some function of time. But that's not enough, because we're not just going back and forth on the x line here, we're actually making a circle, right? The y coordinate has to change as well. So we're also going to define y as a function of t. So I'm going to say that y equals g of t. Okay. So now the position... Um, of the car on high speed oval. And you know, I, I used to be a big racing fan and I was a, a fan of actually um, Indy cars and Formula One cars um, more than the stock cars. But uh, anyway, the oval is a lot easier to map, to map mathematically than a, a Grand Prix circuit. So the high speed oval it is. Uh, anyway, the position of the car uh, on the high speed oval at any time is x, y, or some other function of time, comma, some function of time. Right, so we're just going to say, well, we're going to start the stopwatch, <clears throat> and then x 
will be some function of that time, and y will be some function of that time, and that will map our car as it goes around this race course. So the more formal definition of a, um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, this is totally the wrong class, we got to go back. You're not interested in college math and, and fractions, although maybe you are. Um, lectures 11.1, uh, we're going to do a definition of a parametric curve. So here's the nice mathematical definition. If x and y are given as functions, x equals f of t, y equals g of t, over an interval i of t values, right? So we're going to specify all time can go between you know, all positive numbers or just from 0 to 3 hours or something like that. Then the set of points x, y equals f of t, g of t, defined by these equations is a parametric curve. So this is now a parametric curve. The equations are parametric equations for the curve. All right. So um, let's take a step back and uh, look at a little easier problem. I'll do this on the next page so we can fit them both on one piece of paper. Um, and my more realistic problem, marginally more realistic, is uh, let's say we have uh, a person standing up on top of a cliff. All right, there's a cliff and then maybe an ocean down here, waves. And just to make this a Dressler realistic problem, we're going to put my kayak is actually orange. So we're going to put a kayak down here, right? Because all things relate to um, sea kayaking. So uh, this person is on top of this cliff, and they're going to throw a rock. And the rock is going to travel. Um, let's make the rock uh, purple, because we haven't used purple this semester. Um, they're going to throw the rock this way. And we know that the rock is going to land somewhere out here, hopefully short of, of me in the sea kayak. We'll define a few things. Um, first of all, we'll define uh, that this thing has some height. Right? Our cliff has some height. And uh, we'll say that there's a coordinate system that goes down here. And so we'll call this x as usual, and we'll call this y as usual, like this. Um, we throw the rock. Um, with some initial velocity, we'll call that v0. All right. Now this thing looks like it goes in a parabola. Okay, and maybe some of you are saying, well, of course it goes in a parabola, but we don't know that quite yet. What do we know? Well, we know that the x-coordinate of the rock uh, is... just whatever the initial velocity is times the time. Because the x-coordinate is just going to go ch -ch 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 -ch. There's no other forces acting in it this way, so it's just going to go at a steady rate. V initial times time, right? And we know that the y-coordinate of this thing, if, we, if we're only concerned about where the rock is up and down, it's going to be h minus uh, 1 half at squared which in this case is one half gt squared. All right, so this really, if we think about x and y coordinates in this throwing a rock problem, it, it kind of became, without knowing it, <coughs> a parametric equation, right? Or a set of parametric equations. Um, to make this a little bit more real, let's do the, um, uh, let's say that the height is uh, the dizzying height of 100 meters. And uh, I'm going to say that V initial, uh, let's see, what's a realistic, let's see, throw it, say 60 miles an hour is, uh, well, let's say, yeah, yeah, let's say 50 miles an hour is a realistic throw. Um, most of us could probably throw 50 miles an hour, which works out to be 20 meters per second. And uh, we're going to, for the sake of ease, say that gravity, um, gravity pulls down, right? So it's negative 10 meters per second squared. Um, so if we were to make a table of values uh, to, to kind of map this thing out, we could say that, um, well, okay, let, let's first do, um, so x is going to equal uh, 20t, right? And then uh, y is going to equal, um, h is 100, minus 1 half g, so it's negative 10, negative uh, 5t squared. 
and then we'll make a little table of values here. Let's say there's um, we have time, which is going to kind of just march forward, and then we've got um, our x position, and we've got our y position. And just because you know, normally we make our table of values the other way, but because I'm running out of room, we're going to do it this way. And let's say the time is going to go uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 seconds. We'll see what happens 7 seconds later. So x, right, is just 20t. So the x position, right, is just going to keep on going. Um, where's my thing? It's going to keep on going from left to right up here. So after 0 seconds, um, it won't go anywhere. After 1 second, 20, 2, 40, 3 would give us 60, 80, um, 5 is uh, 100, 100, 6 is 120, 140, like that, right? Now, um, y is uh, 100, so I mean, can I realistically throw a rock 140 meters, right? I should be playing in the NFL or the um, Major League Outfielder if I could throw 140 meters. But anyway, this is an academic problem, right? Um, let's look at the uh, y values. So when I first throw it at time equals zero, uh, my y value is actually uh, 100, right? Because I'm up at the top of the cliff. And then after one second, it's uh, five squared, so that's 95. After two seconds, um, let's see, two, four, 20, 80. Which makes sense, right? It's falling, right? Because here's my rock. It started up at here 100 meters, and then it's falling down. And then it would go to um, 20, 50, 55, 55, and then so at 4 seconds, 16, 80, 20, and at 5 seconds, uh, 25, 125, ooh, that's interesting, negative 25. So at this point, my rock is you know below the surface of the water. So this is done here, All right? So we've kind of plotted out all our, all our stuff. Is, does this, if I were to plot these points, does this in fact make a parabola? Let's investigate this further. We know what a, a parabola looks like. Parabola looks like, uh, you know, y equals x squared, right? We know what it looks like in terms of x and y, but we don't know what this parametric thing, uh, you know, how this works out. So what we're going to do is say that... Um, I know that x equals 20t, and y equals uh, this you know, t squared thing. Well, if I solve both these for t, solve the parametric equations for t, then I know that, um, let's see, x equals 20t, so t equals x over 20, and then sub into the y equation and then I've got um, y equals 100 minus um, 5 times uh, x t over 20 but it's t squared right so it's squared um, equals 100 minus uh, 5 over 400, right? 20 squared is 400, so that's 1 over 80. Uh, 1 over 80x squared. Um, oh, no, that's supposed to be x. That's the problem here. This is supposed to be an x. Like what? I was trying to get rid of my x. So this is x over 20. Because t, I took this t here, this t here, and I subbed it in where the uh, where the t was in my y equation. So now I've got this thing, and so if I rearrange that just a little bit, it looks like y equals negative one eightieth x squared plus one hundred. So sure enough, this is an upside down parabola, right? Kind of flat um, with its vertex up at hundred. So this is, in fact, a parabola. And we got that by saying, um, by eliminating t from this uh, pair of parametric equations.
Um, now, in my notes, I've got a bunch of really cool ones done up, but it would take me forever to do. Uh, so I'm going to use the miracle of um, modern technology and uh, um, just toggle over to, I'm going to escape out of here. I'm going to toggle over to this guy here. And hopefully you guys can see this okay. Uh, let me make a little adjustment so I, it's at least in the middle of the screen. Um, so this is, if you guys have not used the Wolfram demonstration product project, you know, people just, people like me, um, write these little uh, Mathematica applications. And it's really great for dem demonstrating stuff. So here's one. Um, X is the cosine of T. Y is the sine of T. Now, if you've taken trigonometry somewhat recently, you should kind of recognize it that X is cosine, Y is sine. This is somehow related to the unit circle. So if I, and my t starts at zero and it goes to something over here, if I slide this along, so at zero, my position, if t is zero, my x is one, right, because cosine of one, zero is one, and my sine is zero, so that makes sense. So if I slide this along, and as t marches forward, so time marches forward, I like to think of t as time, right, what happens, it goes like that. But then my y starts decreasing as my x is also decreasing because cosine and sine are both decreasing. And I can just slide this thing along and this traces out a circle. So before a, a circle was not a function, but now we can define the circle in x and y as two separate functions, two parametric equations where t is the parameter. Time is going forward and so this thing traces along like this and it makes um, a circle. If you want to check this out, there's a bunch more you can play with, demonstrations.wolfram.com, and then go to Parametric Trace, and there's a bunch of cool ones. Um, the unit circle, you've you know, been there, done that, so let's look at something more interesting. Um, what about, uh, oh, how about this one here? X is T squared, and, oops, kind of let the cat out of the bag there. Um, X equals T squared, and Y equals T. So when we start at zero, Right, where should that start? Um, oh, t must be starting at 1 there. Is that what's going on? Oh, I'm starting at negative 1. So if I go here to 0, right, it should be at 0, 0. Um, but as I go like this, what shape does this make? Well, we kind of recognize it here. If we were to shuffle this stuff around, we could see that um, we, if we replaced t with x, we could see that this becomes a parabola, except it's a sideways parabola. Once again, this would not be a function if we just did the vertical line test, but we can make it a function um, with parametrics. Here's another kind of cool one. So as I, as I adjust here, I can make all sorts of wild shapes. You know, and that traces back and forth and it, it becomes this periodic thing. So, um, you know, as I go from zero to two pi, uh, the x value does three cycles of things, and the, and the y value does four cycles of things. So it's kind of fun to play with uh, some stuff like this. Uh, just to give you a sense of how you can make crazy shapes with functions, as long as you use parametrics. <clears throat> um, another one of my favorite ones that uh, I used to think about as a, as a kid a lot, actually. And it might point out what a weirdo I really was. Is um, if you've got a bicycle... Um, so here we could uh, see uh, Wolfram demo project. Another example of this, which is pretty neat, um, if you had a bicycle wheel, and so this is my representing representation of a bicycle wheel. And then at night, you know, people have these uh, these reflectors. Or at least you're supposed to. You're legally required to have reflectors, but nobody really does. And as this wheel goes rolling around, I used to wonder what shape, <clears throat> you know, what path does the reflector go in? And it turns out um, the path of the reflector. Uh, this is the bicycle wheel. There's actually a good book called The Bicycle Wheel. It's about building bicycle wheels. And what an elegant title, right? The Bicycle Wheel. I'm going to make that The Bicycle Wheel. 
um, and the path of the reflector does something like this. And it goes up and down like that. And it's a bit of a lengthy proof and a lot of geometry um, to show this thing, but this is called a cycloid. And it's defined by um, the x equals, uh, how does it work? It's um, a t plus, I think x works out to be the cosine of t. And uh, y equals just, um, uh, I think it works out to be just uh, a, oh, this is actually a here. And y equals just a sine of t. It goes like that. The cool thing about a cycloid is if you flip it upside down and you kind of made a half pipe looking thing out of it, it goes like this. Um, this is called a brachistrony. Brachistochrone. This shape here is a brachistochrone. What that means, if you were to drop a marble, let's say if I were going to do a, a light blue marble here, if I were to drop a marble there and drop a marble here, right, this one's on a really steep part of the, the, the cycloid, this one's on a really shallow part of the cycloid. Um, both marbles, I'll do, leave it in blue. Both marbles reach center at same time, right? <clears throat> and that's just kind of this, this cool feature of these uh, shapes. And it kind of shows the connection between, you know, this, you know, what does a bicycle wheel have to do with gravity and half pipes and marbles? Um, but these bizarre connections that happen in the physical and mathematical world. All right, anyway, that, I don't know why I talked about that one. I just think it's cool. And I don't have much for notes here. I'm just kind of winging this lecture because uh, I promised to have it up today, and my son is sick, and I don't have time to make notes. Uh, but I do have a couple examples I'd like to do. Um, and my first example, and this is kind of similar to what you will do in your homework, is this. Um, let's say that uh, my parametric equations are x equals 3 minus 3t and uh, y equals 2t and um, t uh, is an element of this uh, that goes from 0 to 1. All right, so we're going to limit Right, remember back in our definition of, uh, of the parametric equations, we, we put some interval on, on time, and I'm going to limit time from 0 to 1 second, or 0 to 1, or the parameter goes from 0 to 1, whatever. So the question is, what shape does this make? If we were to, if we were to draw this out, what should, kind of shape does it make? Um, if we think about this, x is 3 minus 3t, three so x starts out positive and then continually gets smaller at a constant rate of negative 3 y continually gets bigger at a rate of constant t, but 2 times t versus 3 times t. So what, what shape does this make? What shape is this? Right. Well, the way to do it again is to uh, eliminate t. To get... Uh, x and y only. Well, what the heck, you know, I just said that life is a lot better a lot of times if we um, have x and y separately as a function of t, and now I'm saying going the other way around. Well, this is just practice, kind of going back and forth. So we'll start with this one. We'll say that um, x equals 3 minus 3t, three and so we subtract the 3 from both sides. Actually, we'll add this to both sides. And then so we'll say 3t equals 3 minus x. And we'll divide those out and say that uh, t equals, and divided by 3 is 1, minus uh, x over 3. All right? We'll do the same thing over here with y equals 2t. So... Um, 
we can say that t equals, well that one's a little easier, t equals y over 2, right? Well, t equals t, so that means 1 minus x over 3 must equal y over 2. And we can multiply everything by 2, and then we get uh, y equals, and uh, this times 2 is 2 minus 2 thirds x, or to make this a little more familiar, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So what does this thing look like? Well, this is the slope of a line, right? Or the, the equation for a line. So we draw in x and y. Um, we have x there, and we have y there. Our intercept is at 2, so we go 1, 2. And um, our slope is negative 2 over 3, so down 2 over 3, 1, 2, 3. So we've got some line that goes like this. Oop, holy cow, is that bad? Let's try that again. The hardest part about this is, is making straight lines because you can't, the feedback is just a little bit delayed. So we get some straight line that looks like this. But wait, uh, t is limited. We have to remember this up here um, that t is limited uh, between um, 0 and 1. So when t equals 0, uh, x equals uh, 3. So we're starting here. Normally red does not stand for start, but today it does. And then when t gets to 1, um, x becomes uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. So we finish up at x equals 0 up here. And so really, our parametric equation goes from here to here. It kind of goes backwards of what we normally think. So this is um, from when we go, when t goes from 0 to 1, we just get this little stretch, this little segment of the line right there. So that's an example of how to go from um, parametric to Cartesian, right? Uh, so we, to help us draw a picture. Um, let's do another example of this thing here. Uh, and we'll do it here. And we'll do the same thing, except this time I'm going to say uh, x equals sine of t and y equals uh, cosine of 2t. All right, so what happens this time? The cosine, the y value, is kind of doing everything twice as fast as the, uh, as the x value, which is the sine. So this equals this. Now, in the previous example, you know, I solved both for t. And so this means that... Um, t equals the uh, arc sine of x and y equals um, the arc sine of or 2t equals the arc cosine of uh, y and so um, t equals uh, cosine inverse of y divided by 2, and we set those equal to each other. Our cosines equal our cosines. That did not help at all. In fact, that was a disaster. So I wonder if we have a better way we can do that. Um, well, one of our problems is that we've got this cosine of 2t here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we've got y equals uh, cosine of 2t. If I could somehow convert this to sines, you know, then maybe I could relate x and y a little more easily because I've got y in terms of sine, x in terms of sine, etc. So we will go to our handy um, trig cheat sheet, which I actually posted up on Blackboard, and we'll scroll down here looking for something related to cosine, some double angle stuff, facts and properties, blah, 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 tangent, cotangent, 
Well, here's some half angle formulas. You know, I mean, maybe there's a some cosine of two theta there, cosine of two theta there, maybe. But let's uh, oh, this double angle formulas that looks more like it. Oh, check this out. Here is um, right here. Uh, I'm looking right here. I've got cosine in terms cosine of two theta in terms of sine squared of theta. So cosine of two theta is one minus two sine of theta. Cosine of two theta. 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. So cosine of 2t, where am I, equals 1 minus sine squared of t. Now we know that this, in this strange trigonometric notation, this really means it's 1 minus sine of t and this thing that's supposed to be parenthesis there, squared. Well, sine of t, I know that's x, right? Sine of t is x. So y, if I look at that, that they're both x, so sine of t here is the same as sine of t here. So I go back here and I can write this as y equals 1 minus x squared. Or... Uh, the way this makes more sense to me, y equals negative x squared plus 1. So this is just a parabola, upside down parabola, that's shifted up by 1. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot it. Let's check that trick sheet again. 2 sine squared. All right, so I forgot a 2 here. So this becomes uh, 2, and this becomes uh, 2, and this becomes uh, 2, and this becomes uh, 2. So y equals negative 2x squared plus 1. I thought something was wrong there. And so we can draw kind of a prepare ourselves for an upside down parabola. This is x, this is y, vertex at 1. And now instead of going over 1 and down 1, we go over 1 and down 2, so it goes like that, and over 1 and down 2, like that, and then over 2 and then down 4, so that's something like uh, down here, 3 more, something like that, over 1 down, eh, so it's kind of symmetric looking like that, and so now we know we have um, this parabola looking thing, and this is a terrible parabola, I know. But we have this thing that looks like this, right? However, once again, uh, if I were to limit this, if I said that, um, uh, let's say that t equals, uh, since this is sines and cosines, let's say that t uh, goes from negative pi over 2 2 pi over 2, we're going to limit t somehow. Well, when, when it's pi over 2, x is um, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So here in red, we would have x equals negative 1, and then here we have x equals 1. So really, we're only going along this line here when we limit our uh, um, t from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And a lot of your homework problems um, only want you to sketch a certain range. Um, okay, so let's bring this thing full circle, or um, full oval, and let's go back to our <clears throat> original problem, which said that we have this high-speed oval. And we're trying to come up with a parametric equation for a high-speed oval. All right, so it looks something like this, and we said this is x, and we said this was y. And um, yeah, I don't know like how big Daytona is, for instance, but let's call that, for the sake of easy math, two miles, and let's call that one mile. And we need to come up with a... Um, 
find equation for let's say two laps around um, the uh, Madison College high speed oval. All right. Um, I know that from earlier that uh, I recall that um, x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t. Well, I know that this makes a circle. So um, how can I make sure that in my x direction I go kind of twice that far, you know, double the radius of the unit circle. In my y direction I only go that far. <clears throat> so I could say that for oval, I'm just going to extend the x's. So I'm going to say that x equals two times the cosine of t. And I'm going to say that y equals just plain old sine of t. And I think that would do it. Um, but the problem is, how do I ensure there's just two laps? And I'm going to say that t goes from 0 Instead of going, you know, 2 pi would give me one lap, so I'll just go uh, to 4 pi. All right, so that's one possibility. Um, or I could say x equals 2 cosine of 2t, right? So I kind of double how fast this goes around. I, I shorten the period of my function. y equals um, just plain old sine of 2t. And that would work if I, my t only went from uh, to 2 pi. Right, this works too. And there's a number of different equations. There's all sorts of stuff I could do. Um, but these are two relatively simple ones. To get the shape I want um, by tweaking you know, something that I know. And remember, this whole class is about taking a problem we know and tweaking it to get the problem we want or taking the problem we have and tweaking it to look like something I know. And so the same philosophy still applies. That is it. Uh, the end of your uh, lesson on parametric equations. It, it may have been a little long. I, I forgot to start a timer on this. But so be it. Um, please give the homework a crack tonight because some of these are tricky. And uh, I'd like to work on those tomorrow. Uh, have a good night.